Project Series, and today we're going to talk about a case with two diagnostic possibilities, and probably both are present. But the question is how much of one, how much of the other, and which is the predominant disease. So this was a young woman who presented with aneuric acute renal failure, malignant hypertension with all the changes in the eye, eye grounds of that, and systemic lupus with uh, uh, previous history of proteinuria. So um, on the one hand, so you can think about like numbers of things, right? <laughs> so, like um, if it is aneuric acute renal failure due primarily to the lupus nephritis, then you'd expect lots of crescents because that is the evidence for really severe glomerular disease. On the other hand, if it's aneuric renal failure on the basis of malignant hypertension, that is a thrombotic microangiopathy-like condition, and you might expect lots of fibrin thrombi then, and, and other manifestations of primary vascular disease. So let's see what we actually found now that when we focus on the screen there. So um, this uh, structure that may look quite unusual to you now in the, in the center is an arterial undergoing fibrinoid change. So all the structure is sort of missing. It's, it's just a sort of brightly eosinophilic granular circular structure where you can't really identify the endothelium, um, the individual muscle cells you cannot see. You're just seeing this homogeneous fibrinoid change um, alteration in this arterial. That is then associated with uh, glomerulus here and here, both of which are hypercellular with more cells than they should have. Um, now, what about crescents? Are there a lot of crescents? There's only one crescent. <laughs> so um, there is one, and it's right here. And uh, as I go up higher, you can see a little bit of, of what is happening. Uh, so, in the crescent, there are foam cells. These uh, cells here are foam cells, and then other cells. Uh, some of these would be epithelial cells, some would be inflammatory cells. Most crescents start out as a pure epithelial phenomenon, and then Bowman's capsule, which is right here, breaks. And you get a mixture then of inflammatory cells from the outside and epithelial cells from the inside, forming the crescent-shaped crescent. And the remaining glomerular tuft is this structure down here. Um, so if primary lupus nephritis was the main cause of the aneuric renal failure, you might expect to have lots of crescents, but we only have one. And uh, if um, um, malignant hypertension were the primary cause of the renal failure, you might expect a lot of vascular disease. Now, as we look around, at the other areas of the biopsy, um, we don't see obvious fibrin thrombi. But that doesn't mean that they're not here. We have to use a special stain to look for fibrin called Martius scarlet. So let's just go to the other piece of tissue and thoroughly examine this piece. You can see another glomerulus here with once again 
fibrinoid change in the entering arteriole, and they, these would be glomerular lobules that are markedly hypercellular. So you may remember that a normal glomerulus should not contain more than 120 cells, 120 nuclei. So these blue circles here are the nuclei. And you don't really have to count them. You, you can tell that they are hypercellular. There would be more than 120 uh, nuclei here. So this is showing a combination in this one glomerulus of uh, severe proliferative glomerular disease and uh, thrombotic microangiopathy with uh, fibrinoid change in this ar arterial. But how could we tell more about that? Well, for that, we use a Marcia's scarlet stain. And that's shown here. OK, so. Control tissue. On most of the special stains, we have a control tissue to make sure that the stain is working. And then this is the biopsy itself. Um, and so what's pretty interesting <laughs> is that um, most of the glomeruli here do not contain fibrin. Um, but one does. So <laughs> you're kind of going along and then, ah, nothing happening here. And uh, suddenly you encounter this glomerulus right here. And so you can see all those red structures there. And so those are fibrin thrombi inside the vessels of that glomerulus. And here they are at higher power. So all this red stuff is fibrin, and some of it is more pure fibrin. You can imagine, so fibrin is in tactoids or strands, sort of like it's woven, right? And you can uh, at least uh, fantasize that you're seeing strands within these fibrin from by. Um, and it's a very uh, you know, dramatic, convincing change, uh, but it's just in this one glomerulus. So if you think about sampling error, like if we didn't have this glomerulus, if we had a less adequate sampling of the tissue, we'd be unlikely to see this. And this sort of changes the overall dynamic. So that with this finding, you would say that the findings in favor of malignant hypertension and uh, thrombotic microangiopathy are approximately equal to the findings uh, indicating severe glomerular disease. So probably the patient needs to be treated as if both of those are quite important factors clinically. Um, and the renal failure is due to a tr true combination of two common diseases, one being malignant hypertension with thrombotic microangiopathy, and the other being systemic lupus with proliferative nephritis. OK, that's it. Thanks very much. <laughs> so, I hope you enjoyed this. Okay.